Yeah, yeah, so I got I got the page up here. Go ahead and like we're live. Right? That's going on the intro. I don't know how to do an intro. A lot of logistics work, optimization, um stuff a lot of probability and statistics and math kinda all work into that. On a program called Chocolate University. Listen, how did you get those quads of yours? I lived in South Korea for about eight years. Nobody saw that coming. That's gonna be on the intro. Nothing against people who smoke pot and skip class. That's how we lost a whole bunch of episodes. I just studied in Dubai. I was like going around with one of my friends in his Lamborghini. Bad feeling about this. Hello and welcome to the Life of Podcast. Shut up and sit down. Hello, hello. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Life of Podcast. Today we have on my good friend Eric Williams. This crazy motherfucker has been to 58 countries, senior at the University of Arkansas with an accounting major and an information, sy information systems minor. Should we retake those? Fuck. <laughs> I think we should just keep rolling. I mean, at all this right, point, Eric. We're, all we're right, tell us, tell in. us a little about yourself. We're too far in. We're balls deep. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. Um, you got to so, be within. Sorry, within like three, three uh, fists or four fists of the mic. So like this. Yeah. Okay. We have really high quality mics. <laughs> okay. Well, that, um, that's not a joke. We actually do. That, I'm. I'm not <laughs> saying that you don't. Like, okay. Dude. Okay. Well. I mean, other than my major and minor, I mean, pretty simple guy. I travel a lot, um, hang out with my parents. I play piano, did gymnastics for three years. Damn. It's everything. I, I literally look at myself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, what's my one regret in life? Well, I have two regrets in life. Piano or gymnastics? Both. <laughs> I wish I would have done gymnastics, and I wish I learned how to play piano. But it's not too late for you to do piano, probably gymnastics. I could do but... gymnastics. I'm a pretty... You no know, versatile motherfucker. Mm. Mm. You have a gym to go to for that? No, but you see, that's why I don't do it because it'd be weird because it'd be like me and a whole bunch of five year old girls. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be five year old girls. Who the fuck else is going to be as bad at me as me <laughs> at gymnastics? Anyone else? All right, fuck it, whatever. All right. <laughs> so, Eric, um, how was your time at the University of Arkansas? Really boring questions first. Um, what did you like? What did you hate? Um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I don't like a lot of the classes that I've had to take mm -hmm. uh, because my professors, some of my professors have been really boring. Um, I like my job. It's probably the best part. What's your job? Uh, I intern at the Razorback Sports Network. So okay. I'm like, our job title is student production assistant, but we pretty much do whatever they tell us to do. So if they need you to work camera, you do that. Um, I primarily work replay, so... If you're at any of our basketball games or our football games, uh, the replays that you see on the video board, uh, I'm responsible for rolling those. Damn. Are there any like rules around what replays you can do and not? Yeah, you definitely cannot replay someone getting hurt. Like that's um, bullshit, man. <laughs> what if they cracked that it's, motherfucker? It's a rule. They're gonna. What if they just like whoop, pah, and cracked that motherfucker? You, you, you can't do it. <laughs> so um, that's. That's that's boof as fuck. <laughs> you definitely we replay pretty much any foul, mm -hmm. uh, any turnover, yeah. especially if it's close in the game. Now let me let me. What if there's a foul or a turnover where there happens to be an injury? Then we will probably replay it up to the end. We are not allowed. What to if put it's that right the before board. the foul? And then there's another injury Winston, right now. we are not allowed to put injuries on the video board. It is a rule. Is it like an SEC rule or an Arkansas rule? I'm not sure. Okay. But you can replay it on the network. So, like, if you're watching it on TV, yeah. you're allowed to play it there, but not yeah, on the it video sells. boards. Because it sells. I mean, I guess. But yeah. you definitely can't put that on the video board. Well, the students are poor, so you wouldn't want to show students. I mean, but the students want to see it for some reason. It's yeah, because like, they're six. They're some sick motherfuckers. Like, like they want to see like. And you got a whole bunch of kids pent up, you know, sexual frustration because nobody gets anything. Um, I mean, let's be honest. That's what Tinder and Bumble are all about. And like, I don't. I don't know. I don't think I'm that ugly. I mean, I feel like it's pretty easy to to have sex in college. Yeah, well, I just don't try. So. Then you can't be. Yeah, <laughs> you can't you're be not mad. Mad. <laughs> You know, you can't blame me for locking myself in a room twenty four seven and studying, and then being mad for locking myself in a room twenty four seven and studying. You have to have a life. I'm blaming of your society. Academics. No, I'm gonna blame. I am a victim. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Razorback Dude. Sports Network. How long have you been there? I have been there since June of 2016. Okay. 
I worked my first show August 25th of that year. Our okay. soccer game against Penn State. How'd that go? Did we win? Yeah, we won. Nice. Uh, we don't have a men's soccer team. We do not. Just Why is that? Uh, you have to have a balance between like men's and women's sports. Like You have to have like equal number of uh, teams. To me, that's kind of sexist. To have an equal number? Yeah, because you're like focusing on the fact that they are that sex. And like you're you're putting them in barriers and you're defining it. You know what if they don't identify as that? You know, I'm just opening broader questions here. This is life for podcast episode four. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So how how did you get into that? Just for any, if anybody's interested, because I mean it's a pretty sweet gig. I mean you get to go to all the games, all the good games for free. Yeah. Uh, I mean so... you're doing some pretty cool shit. You get, you get nice views that you don't ever get ever in your life ever yeah, again, basically. True. I mean I just I had got to this point with like my business major i was i was definitely getting bored mm-hmm. and i have an interest in sports so i have a couple friends that were like hey you know i interned at rsn you know you should come down and interview it might be something that you'll like mm-hmm. and i interviewed and they showed me around the control room talked to me about some stuff that i'd probably do there and i loved it so All right. they hired me and i've been there since i plan on working there next year during my grad year too okay what are you what are you getting your major in for grad is that what it's called is it called a major for a grad I'm not not sure what's your grad in accounting <laughs> accounting okay so you're gonna be a cpa yes hopefully. okay a certified public accounting for accountant for like you dumb motherfuckers who don't know shit um <laughs> all right so you were at the rsn since 2016 that's a pretty sick gig um i'll try to find a link for that and put it in the description okay and uh oh you may have highlights there may be eric williams highlights on the rsn <laughs> No, I mean, I make highlights for, like, stuff that we do. Like, yeah, I know, sports, but, like, but... everybody loves to see the camera, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't always I mean, I work see... camera. Uh, no, that's, like, the that's like a meme where, like, it shows the camera. Ne- never mind. I spend way <laughs> too much time on the internet. <laughs> All right, so how'd you get to go to 58 countries? Um, well, both of my parents are in the military, so part mm-hmm. of it is through that. I lived in four countries, including the United States, but I just happen to have parents who... Mind-blowing. You lived in the United States. <laughs> Let him talk, boy. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but uh, my parents just love to travel, and um, my dad was an Air Force pilot, and his dad was a pilot for British Airways. So that's how I traveled a lot through. I mean, when your granddad's a pilot for like a major airline, you mm. get to go just about anywhere. So that's sick. Okay. Um. So can you list? Uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try this. All right, these are the ones that Eric says he's been to in like the past decade. All right, we're going Germany. Does that say France? Yeah. Also Monaco. What is Monaco? It's a principality that's like southern tip of France. Okay, so Germany, France, Monaco, uh, the UK. He's been to England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. He's been to actual Ireland. If you don't know the difference between Northern Ireland and Ireland, um, you're probably pretty dumb. But uh, Google it. Switzerland, Spain. Oh shit! The Alchemist just fell from the sky. If you haven't read it, actually, (laughs) let me plug something here. We have a code for two free audiobooks for any of you people um, through Audible, and uh, I'm pretty sure they give us money, which is kind of sick. So. Um, just throw like 20 different emails into it and use our link. It'll be in the description below. <laughs> and, and <laughs> below. Below, yes. And uh, so just like, I don't know, I'll give you guys half the money or something. We can scam these motherfuckers. Um, all right, so restarting. Germany, France, also Monio. Monaco? Monaco. Monaco. Germany, France, also Monaco. <laughs> Uh, the UK is England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Switzerland, Spain, Italy, United States, Canada, Mexico, South Korea, China, Japan, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Is that Zambia? Yeah. All right, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, the United UAE, the United Arab Emirates, um, Peru, Brazil, Ecuador, Ecuador Russia, U- the Ukraine. Belarus. Belarus. I'm a very traveled individual. Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Nigeria, Egypt, Austria, Czech Republic, the Bahamas, Turkey. You've been to the Bahamas? That's sick, dude. Yeah. Um, the Bahamas, Turkey, the Netherlands, Belgium, Norway, Portugal, Madagascar, and Denmark. Yeah. 
And you say that's all in like the past 10 years. Yeah. On average, like for how many days you're in the U.S., how many days are you out of the U.S.? Um, I guess it depends. Um, like if you just had, like took a rough estimate of like the past 10 years, like would you say 30% of your time has been abroad? I feel like most of the summer months for sure. So pretty much June, July, August, I'm not here. Okay, so you, so basically, I mean, when you start throwing in like Vietnam and then study abroad and stuff, you've probably been out of the United States three years out of the past ten. Yeah, for sure. All right, um, that's pretty fucking crazy. What was your favorite? <laughs> um, Loaded that's question. <laughs> that's kind of hard because I've never traveled somewhere that I didn't like. Okay, so um, I cannot say the same. <laughs> there are cities in America that I don't like. For example, Dallas. Why don't Why don't you like Dallas? I don't know. It just seems like. <laughs> yep, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> what, what What is that? I just don't like Dallas, man. I mean, I feel like there has to be a reason there. It's just like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like Houston a lot. I go to Houston often. Houston's pretty sick. I, I mean, I like them both. Out in the Out in Katy area, Cinco. <sighs> Never heard of that. It's a. Uh, it's like you have like Houston, right? Yeah. And then you have Katy. And then part of Katie is Cinco. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Not 100%. <laughs> how, about, how about an easier question here? Which place have you been the longest besides the U.S.? Uh, I lived in South Korea for about eight years. Tell us about so, that. Um, so I was born in Germany, and um, when I was five, my parents divorced, um, and my dad moved to California, and my mom moved to South Korea, and so me and my sister moved there with her, mm -hmm. um, and at first it was supposed to be short term, just about a year, um, but she kept renewing to stay there because it's an awesome place to live. We ended up living there for eight years before moving to Japan. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't really know a lot of Korean. You don't really need to because, I mean, I lived in a suburb of Seoul, so, I mean, okay. everyone knows how to speak English. Okay. Um, some of the signs are even in English, if not all of them. So yeah. It was a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed it. I miss it. Do you ever think you're going to go back and, like, stay for, you know, an extended period of time? Um, I don't know. Uh, I would like to. You'd I'd like, like to. to probably go and, like, teach English or something. Okay. I, I miss it. Yeah, it's hard to find a uh, opportunity to go, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long did you live in Japan? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay, so your first, like, 11 years were not in the U.S. My first 14. Where'd you go after Japan? Arkansas. Okay, so, all right, so how long were you in Germany? Like, five years. Okay. Walk us through the time from you were born until you get to Arkansas. Okay, so it's like, Germany until, like, 2001... Okay. And then South Korea till 2008, till like June of 2008, and then Japan until June of 2010. And then I moved to Arkansas the next month. Okay. And how did you like the transition? I hated it at first. Uh, it's dramatically different from living in Japan. Yeah. Um, so I was miserable at first, but then I learned to like it. I really like this part of Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, not so much uh, the other parts. Of That's how everybody feels, so yeah. you're not alone yeah. in that. <laughs> what, 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 were the, what were the biggest, like you said you didn't like it initially, so what were the biggest things that you like didn't like coming to America from South Korea or Japan? Well, I mean, so like when you live in like large cities and like I was used to like taking the subway to school and like walking to school and mm -hmm. like now people like drive everywhere and like or they'll walk and i really didn't like that and i feel like south korea and japan were like pretty diverse and uh when you when you move to arkansas from like japan it's kind of it's like a vast cultural difference yeah uh, difference in the food too like i'm not used to seeing so many mcdonald's mm -hmm. everywhere mm -hmm. so that was kind of hard and it was kind of hard like relating to people who are like from one place like this is where they grew up and like like they said they've never left yeah they've never left and like it's kind of hard like you know by the time i moved I, did, I didn't move to arkansas until i started ninth grade but like those people had already like you know built their friendships and like mm -hmm. i was trying to like where do i fit in and like i i kind of struggled with that yeah so yeah that no I, I had a, a similar problem in that i was born in Harahan, which is right outside New Orleans, mm -hmm. and then we moved to Metairie, which is also right outside New Orleans, and then we moved to Mandeville, and that's, I started, 
school when we were in Metairie. Yeah. And then we went to Mandeville, and I went, like, kindergarten, or, like, into preschool, kindergarten, first grade. Um, and then, like, I guess halfway through first grade, we moved to Sydney, Nebraska. And so that was weird. <laughs> um, it's a town of, like, 5,000 people. Great place, though. It was super sick because I could do anything I wanted, um, and it didn't matter. Because, like, like nobody's going to abduct me, you know? Because there's only 5,000 people who live in the whole town. The, like, most terrible crime that happened in, like, the past, like, in people's memory was someone stole some copper wire and then turned themselves in. <laughs> oh, also, some people robbed a bank. Um, but, like, no one was hurt. And they left town and then came back into town and got arrested. Because um, there's only 5,000 people in the whole town. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be hard, be hard to find somebody to hide you. Yeah. Because, um, like, not only does everybody know the cops, but, like, the cops are your neighbor. Um, <laughs> so that's a thing. But then we moved to Arkansas in fifth grade. And so, yeah, I kind of hit that, like, I don't know anybody and everybody's, like, from here. Yeah. Which is weird because nobody in northwest Arkansas is from northwest Arkansas. Yeah. Um, and so that probably made your adjustment once you got to college a little bit easier yeah yeah for sure. but like everybody had been here since they were like born mm -hmm. you know maybe they lived somewhere for like two years and they're like oh i'm from florida like yeah. dude you you lived in florida too or two yeah and then your dad got hired by walmart like you are walmart <laughs> um but yeah no i had that same issue uh where did you live in arkansas um so when i was in japan uh, my mom decided that she was going to remarry so we moved to like southeast arkansas uh and my mom's originally from here so that's why that was my decision to come to college here okay was, like, she wanted to move back and i took a tour up here when i was 17 and i just loved it okay so so when did you move to southeast arkansas uh june of 2010 so you're how many you're like sophomore in high school freshman in high school i was a freshman i started my Damn. freshman year yeah, that would be a hard adjustment. Yeah, yeah that, that would be <laughs> shitty, especially because you went from South Korea to Japan. Yeah. And so you had already restarted, but that's in like sixth grade. Yeah. And I so that's a lot easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do seventh and eighth grade than ninth, tenth, eleventh, yeah. twelfth. Um, so yeah, that was probably pretty shitty. But, um, okay, so you come to Arkansas and then you've done a lot of study abroad while you're here. I've done two. You've done two. Yeah, Vietnam and Ireland. Vietnam and Ireland, okay. So you haven't done that much study abroad. Yeah. But you've still traveled. Yeah. Um, why Why did you kind of travel around? Uh, just well, like, was it was it just opportunities presenting itself and you're just like, oh, okay. Or was it like family vacations or was it you independent travel? What was it? Uh, a little of both. Most of it is family vacations. Like, you know, my family loves to travel. My mom, my dad, and my sister, that's pretty much all they do in right. their spare time. So, I mean, any chance I get to go with them, I'm definitely going to hop on board because I love to travel also. But I did, while I was in college, I did do Peru and Switzerland by myself. Okay, how was that? Um, Peru was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Machu Picchu is very beautiful. Okay. Um, I, I thought... Peru is interesting because uh, you don't really have to experience the jet lag. It's the same time zone as, as Arkansas. Okay, yeah, you're just shooting straight down. Yeah, so I, I thought that it made it pretty easy to go out and explore, especially, like, the night I got there. Because normally, like, jet lag hits me pretty hard, so I need, like, a day to, to recover. But yeah. I didn't feel that in Peru. It's very beautiful. People are very friendly. I also hopped over to Ecuador because it's a bordering country. Got to see the Galapagos Islands, which is very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Switzerland, uh, I just went because I was supposed to go to Germany, um, but uh, started snowing, so couldn't get on my flight. So I just stayed in Switzerland for about five, six days. Okay, damn, really that's beautiful. kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess there, like, it could snow for quite a while. Yeah, um, yeah, you can like snow like stuff very that heavy. we don't see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so tell us some stories. Tell us your that's, favorite stories over your entire life. That's pick three. Stories. Just kidding. You can go for like a million. I don't care. No, but um, for example, like you went to Peru by yourself. Yeah. I mean, even being as traveled as at that point, you'd been to at least what, 20, 30 countries. Yeah. So you're pretty traveled at that point. 
did you feel did it how how different did it feel going by yourself um it was interesting that was the first trip i didn't have like you know my parents with me or like my sisters so uh it was kind of crazy like you know like walking through the airports and like you know you're getting your bags and you don't see your parents yeah like, you know with you so it was interesting but i didn't i wasn't like afraid um it's a very safe country um kind of liked it because i felt like i could do more you can't like really do much you can get hammered yeah yeah Shh. it's like that'd be awkward to do like in front of your parents it's yeah. like my parents don't drink that much yeah. and i can't say the same for me <laughs> so. sick <laughs> college <laughs> well i mean i'm not like an alcoholic but i definitely drink more than my parents yeah yeah well i mean yeah same i mean i drink more than my parents that's oh yeah cause, i know that's because my parents don't drink i saw you in vietnam i know vietnam <laughs> was sick <laughs> It's legal. You can't indict me. Um, so, I, one question. One question I have is: so, I mean, obviously, you've been to a bunch of different places. Are it, most of your like, where you, when you go, do you like plan out a lot of different things you want to do, or is it more of like you get there and like you see like what the vibe is and like figure it out and then plan stuff based on like what you hear? So, like, if I'm traveling with my mom, my mom's more of a planner. Mm -hmm. So she has to know, like, what we're doing, when we're doing it, how we're going to do it. So if I'm traveling with my mom, like, definitely. Yeah. Like, she knows, like, as soon as we land, like, who's going to pick us up, where we're going to go. Like, she has, like, a 30-minute schedule. My yeah. dad and my sister are more, like, go with the flow. Like, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of depends on, on who I'm traveling with. Like, if my mom my dad and my sister all go with me we try to compromise like we try to schedule some things and yeah. then like you know try to have fun when we can but uh like i went to germany a couple years ago with my mom and she had everything planned out to like down to like when we would shower and sleep that sucked yeah it, it was not a lot of fun but yeah, my dad is more like let's just see what happens you yeah know? so i enjoy traveling with him more yeah yeah um okay so can you tell us a little bit about Hmm. Zan, do you hear any countries you want to talk about? Oh man, I mean, <laughs> I mean like besides so besides countries. all of them. <laughs> um, so China's China's hot in the news right now. China's when always. when was the last time you went to China? The last time I went to China was 2012. Okay, 2012. So we're looking at. Oh, did you go for the Olympics? No, no. no. 2012 is London. Yeah. I um, did go for the Olympics in 2008, but no. What was that like? It was fun. I went to go watch gymnastics because mm -hmm. Sean Johnson was competing, and she's yeah. my favorite gymnast. So okay. It was cool to see her win a silver medal in the yeah. all-around. I still remember it. Yeah, nice. So. Um, so that was before, like, the world was a completely different place. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 2008. I don't even remember 2008. Did we have smartphones? Michael Phelps got, like, eight gold medals, yeah. wasn't it? At that I, I remember the Olympics, but, like, besides that, I really don't remember much 2008. 2008. So fourth grade. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah? Fifth. Fourth. And fifth. And fifth, yeah. Yeah. But well, the Olympics right. are in the summer, so fourth. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so what's your, I guess, out of fuck, I don't even know where to start, 58 countries. Yeah. Um, do you have, like, a favorite memory or, like, just something that you think about when you go to a certain country, like, oh, yeah, I remember that shit. That was fun. Um, um, or just, like, anywhere. Just, like, tell me stuff about countries okay. so I can be less dumb. I mean, I have that for a lot of countries because, like I said, you know, I've, I've never traveled somewhere I don't like. So I feel like I have a specific memory for, like, every country that I can remember going to. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess if I had to pick, like, uh, some favorites. Um, so China to go see the Olympics was, was definitely cool. It's nice when, like, you know, you compete in gymnastics and you see, like, your favorite gymnast go out and win a medal. It kind of makes you feel like you can go and do that. Yeah. Um, I think about Vietnam a lot, even though that wasn't a vacation. It, a lot of it felt like a vacation. Yeah, it was if, really fun. Yeah. Uh, especially the last few days, like, the island was, was really beautiful. Yeah, but we, like, got, we got a lot of work done while we were there. Yeah, of course. Like, looking back on it, like, we did a lot. Yeah, but I don't know. I didn't feel like it. Yeah, It, no. it didn't feel like, you know... I didn't feel like super tired like at the end of the night like I feel like we would do a lot of work and like I still had energy to like go out yeah no explore. it was weird for me because like we'd wake up at like 5 a.m. with the sun yeah the and sun you're just like up. not tired and like he didn't go to sleep till like 2 3 1 you know like after midnight you're waking up at 5 a.m. and you're just fine with it yeah I feel like we had a pretty close group too. yeah like yeah, that no. kind of helped like everyone you know got along for the most part mm -hmm. so I I liked it 
Yeah, no, it, it was interesting too because we went from having like one roommate to then you got grouped with four. Yeah. And so I think within that, the people who were already had one roommate, they kind of, you know, knew each other a little bit. Yeah. And so going to four wasn't like, oh shit, it's a free for all. Yeah. It's yeah, like, exactly. well, I know this guy's cool, so the other people are probably cool. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I liked a lot about it. If any of you are listening and are interested in the study abroad, I'd highly recommend Vietnam. I would also highly recommend um, Vietnam. Crazy sick trip uh, with Dr. Cop. We got to sip some 100 proof uh, oh, yeah. rice wine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was absolutely terrible, but I had one shot and I was gone, bro. Oh, well, of course. Well, because like, it, was, it was hot and we were on the water and oof. Yeah, I, feel yeah. like, I feel like you were gone like a lot of that trip. It was fun, yeah. Yeah, I, know. I enjoyed that trip. Um, all right, Lord. so I haven't been on Ireland, but I know a lot of people who have. So can you tell us? I mean, that was just this just this past summer yeah. for you. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What'd you like about it? What'd you not like about it? Um, so yeah, we spent five weeks uh, in Ireland. It's with the Walton College. It's one of their uh, study abroad programs. Um, what we did is it's kind of organized like on a weekly basis. So like the first week is like your week of just exploring around the city um in you, dublin in dublin okay. yeah you're gonna spend most of the time in dublin the first three and a half weeks are in dublin uh the last week they'll let you go out west a little bit uh -huh. um and explore so we went to like galway really beautiful city and then your last week is kind of up to you you can do whatever you want um you can go anywhere in ireland and northern ireland you just can't leave the island as a whole okay um, so we visited all the big four accounting firms, which are in Dublin. Three of them are next to each other. Um, I don't know why PwC is like off to the side. Like it's like way farther north. Like I don't know why, but we, we visited all of them. Uh, that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of the second week. The second week is probably like the most business, like kind of, yeah. you're going to visit accounting firms, uh, go to Eurofound, which is like, um, where the European Union is represented in okay. Ireland. Uh, that was pretty interesting because, like, now that the UK is trying to leave the mm -hmm. EU, Ireland is the only English-speaking representative in the EU, which I thought was cool. So we talked a lot about that and, like, you know, how that's going to affect, like, you know, the country as a whole. Yeah, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? On, on the great Brexit? Um, I just... I think it's interesting that they're trying to leave when the UK is like what their third largest uh, I mean the EU is like their third largest employer yeah is that, is that about right yeah no it's some it's something like that I heard a lot of controversial views yeah. like like people did didn't disagree they didn't agree with each other especially when they were drunk at bars in yeah. uh, London and that a lot of the people that I was with um, you gotta remember I'm taking business classes at an American university so a lot of them are pretty you know pro Brexit yeah and so they were really pissed off like the amount of times I heard, Oi, mate, oh, when's this fucking Brexit gonna happen, yeah? Like, that was quite a few. Um, and uh, so that was that was interesting because they kind of, to a certain extent, felt betrayed by the government that it hasn't, like, already yeah. happened. And then they kind of passed that thing where it might not happen. Yeah. But now they're saying it's probably gonna happen anyways. It was pretty interesting. In Ireland, if you, like, talk to people on the streets they really didn't have much of an opinion on brexit they had more of an opinion on like our politics that's which I odd thought, yeah. yeah i thought that was pretty odd like a lot of people when we were walking the streets of dublin we would tell them that we're from the united states and like something would come up about trump like inevitably good or bad yeah <laughs> no i was I, I was that way in that uh either the people were all like they definitely had an opinion on Trump and there was no way you were going to change it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. whether sure. it was good or bad and cuz I I actually argued both and neither time was I successful at changing their opinion. <laughs> um although what I did find very interesting was let me think of this carefully. Every single Middle Easterner who I spoke to in London who was out of university <laughs> likes Trump. Interesting. I thought that was very interesting because even if they have a like even if they have residency in London, I'm pretty sure they can't get over here still because most of them are from Syria. Because um, yeah, London's really big on Syrians, um, and then but I mean all the basically all the banned countries. Um, but it was interesting because they 
that never really came up when you talked to him about it. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of like, oh, he says what he's going to do, and then he does it, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, but um, all the ones who were in college were very anti-Trump and hated the travel ban. Yeah. That's, which, that's what I noticed in, in Ireland. The, yeah. The students there were very anti-Trump. Yeah, no, I think I think we're being brainwashed. <laughs> I'm very anti-university, so... Um, coming says while well, going to yeah university. you're going no, to university I, I would have to say that you know I mean I'm only four semesters in at this point but I took some college classes during the summer and then I've taken them online and I've gone you know on intersections and stuff like that yeah um, so I, I have like after the semester I'll have basically 80 credit hours and none of those are from like AP credit so it's all classes that I've taken yeah because I did really shitty on the AP exams um, <laughs> why because I didn't study my school paid for them, so they were free. That's, which is another that's thing. No excuse. Which is another thing I've been thinking of. Um, someone tossed me the research on this, but I think if your parents don't give you money, it makes you a more successful person. How's that? Like the the I don't, well, I'm. It's I that's mean, that's kind of a personal example, and that my parents basically cut me off. Like in high school, I was buying my own clothes. And like, if I wanted to go to a movie since I was born, I had to find the money to do it. And so now I'm really like, not to brag, but I'm really good at making money. Um, and I mean, there's just a lot of people that don't have that. And to me, it seems to be a correlation of how much your parents take care of you versus how good you are at it. And I certainly think there's at a point where like your parents need to help you out. Cause like I've been in some pretty shitty situations where like, I don't have any money and my parents are just like, life sucks um and sucks. and so but i mean i think i think it definitely depends on the person yeah well, I mean, a lot of it sure. depends on the person but my parents definitely i mean we're the opposite like they they paid for everything up until i went to high school and then they're like when it gets when it t- comes time for college like all the money that you've made working up to that point will go to college mm-hmm. but then i obviously didn't have to pay for college so now that's my money. Well, yeah, but like yeah. you That's worked, you worked hard. Money. You two worked harder because you knew you were gonna have to pay for college. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm saying. Is there's people who know they aren't gonna have to pay for college, and I think I'm not saying that it hurts them, but I don't think they come out as good as people who know they're gonna have to pay for college and either one work their ass off so that they get scholarships or two find a way to make money. You have to like some people abuse the fact that their parents. Can yeah, de- I think it can definitely go. I mean, it, I think it just depends on how parents teach you yeah. like, the val- value of money. Because there's definitely people that know the value of money, yeah. even if their parents are helping. Well, I think I think the best, probably the best way for it to work is for you to get a ton of scholarships because you studied and worked for scholarships. That's probably the best way. That's yeah. always the best to way. Yeah. to work it out um, because then like they don't have to give you money and so you have a little bit of money but not too much and maybe your scholarships don't cover everything but they cover like 85 percent you know yeah um and so that in my opinion yeah you probably should study hard high school kids do well on the ap test yeah. don't yeah. listen to winston don't, don't over don't here winston. <laughs> yeah no if i if i would have gotten credit for every single, i think i took ap lit lang us gov um those ap exams were easy human geography um, yeah, those aren't the. Uh, yeah, those, those anyway, aren't the anyway, tough ones. yeah, I took like six or seven AP exams. Yeah, I could have came in with like thirty credit hours. Um, Come on, boy. Yeah, I know. I could. I could actually, if I would have gotten credit for all of my AP exams, I'm pretty sure I would be graduating this semester. Um, so yeah. I mean, maybe it was the fact that I had to pay for the AP test. That yeah, I yeah. See, well, that, that that's where I got it from. Is like. I noticed that people I talked to in college who had to pay for their AP test did a lot better on those well, AP tests. Well, my high school paid for mine, too, and I still try. Well, yeah, but you're smart. And you're great. smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like... It's just a matter of, like, you gotta... Like, like, maybe you don't have to pay for the AP test now, but if you don't do well on them, you're yeah. gonna have to pay for the college right. course. Yeah, like, that's how my parents pitched it to me, and I'm like, yeah, but, like, the gym's open till midnight, and I want to play basketball. <laughs> You can uh, find a, a balance. Fool. Yeah, no. That's the problem is, I don't know, anything I do, I'm kind of 100%. And, um, uh, and, uh, all right, let's bring it back All right, to, yeah, what yeah. were we talking about? We were talking about countries. We were, Ireland, we were in the Ireland, and then we got into Trump, and then that led down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Trump lives in a rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. I could see Trump living There's in a, a rabbit theory. hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that, someone researched that. Someone researched that, and I want to see critiques 
for me on both sides <laughs> in the comments. I want to see some conservatives roast me for saying he lives in a rabbit hole. I want to see some liberals roast me for saying he lives in a rabbit hole. <laughs> but uh, that's my opinion now just because it's controversial. Both there sides. Um, both sides disagree to the rabbit hole. But uh, all right. So Mexico. I've never been to Mexico. That's kind of a well, – Mexico's kind of died down. How do you feel about the wall? I don't think we should build a wall. Okay. Do you have, like, a reason behind it? I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, true. Okay. My thing was, like, there are a lot of people who come over illegally. Yeah. And it's not going to affect legal immigration. Right. And so, I don't see, I don't know, it gives people jobs, and so that's why I liked it. Because there's a lot of unemployment on the border there. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, maybe employ illegal people to build it. And then make them citizens. That's that's an idea. Groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. Trump. Somebody call Trump on that one. That would get that would get Democrats to support it. Get the Dreamers to build that motherfucker, and then if they build it, they're citizens. That's the trade off. I don't know. Can, I think it's a. We can pay a, a minimum wage. There. Yeah. There's yeah, a no, lot of money sure. there that could go. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Um. Okay. I don't think it'd be the biggest waste of the government's money, is what I'm I mean, trying to get there's at. There's been a lot of wasting of government yeah, yeah. money, but there's, there's a lot of waste there, in the government. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it would it would be way over budget. Because I mean, I think one thing that just that I've heard is like a majority of the illegal immigration that that's happening isn't happening like walking across the border yeah. or like running across the border. It's like they're coming over by plane and then overstaying. Yeah, that's yeah. that's how. It's, well, I mean, people. Every single illegal immigrant not from Canada or Mexico would have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, I mean, I guess you could come from Cuba, but that's kind of the same thing. Um, Cuba's interesting. Have you never been? You've never been to Cuba. Have you been to Cuba? I've not. Ooh, that's your next trip. And write me about it. What yeah. is your next trip? You have uh, one planned? Yeah. What's up? Uh, what's after? What's next? Uh, I mean, in May, I'm going to London and Paris with my sister, but I've already been. In mm -hmm. terms of, like, a country I've never been to that I really want to go mm -hmm. to, uh, I guess my next, like, I guess Mongolia. Mongolia. Okay. I've heard good things about Mongolia. I've I have, too. I know. I've heard Mongolia. someone, when I worked at the study abroad office, they told me that they studied abroad in Mongolia for a semester, and they said it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, no, there was a, uh, I think it was a STAP. Somebody spoke in STAPS class, and they talked about Mongolia. You Ooh, were, I, you I may, you, were you I there? I think I remember, it might, she might have been on the Peace Corps. Yeah, she was on the Peace Corps. See, that's, I've, I've really. heard people talk about that, too. They have you ever thought about cool. that? I have. I mean, why? I've why considered it. Why did you decide against it? I haven't decided against it. Ooh. Just haven't decided for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm there on, like, 90% of the things in the world. <laughs> um, and, uh, okay. So was it, wait, um, so you mentioned that you worked at the study abroad office. You yeah. want to talk about that at all? Uh, yeah. So I worked at the study abroad office last semester. Mm -hmm. um, what they do is they have about five or six students. They call us peer advisors, and students come in and they make appointments with us. And based on certain questions that they answer, so like their major, country of interest, like any language interests, we try to pick some programs for them to decide between. I mean, we don't give them like one specific yeah. one, but so they can decide between them and then like I would go out and do uh, some outreach so like I would speak to classes about mm -hmm. like my study abroad experience talk to them about scholarships and yeah stuff. So, does that pay yeah it I paid might do that. nine dollars an hour well they need someone they need two spots open because two of us don't right work now? there anymore yeah oh shit I could send you the yeah I have my resume ready keep a resume ready 24-7 just keep in mind when you talk to them about Vietnam, talk to them about the academic portion of Vietnam. <laughs> oh, Vietnam was wasted lit. for eighty yeah. percent of the time. So try, like, try to uh, the, I was wasted. I, you can talk about the nightlife, but try to minimize the Just details. So I had a good <laughs> yeah. time with the nightlife, but I really enjoy because they the will other ask things. you a lot of questions about the. Nightlife. Well, I can just That's tell like them about the London. Like in London, I only went out like once a month. Okay, because I because I had a job. But like yeah. if I don't have a job, I don't have anything. Don't at Sorry. the study abroad office. Don't talk about anything crazy. Wait until like after. Yeah, yeah, I know it's... how to interview. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, sir, I have never been arrested. <laughs> what? I don't know where that came from. Are you sure you were in the right background check? Oh, maybe you want to run it again. Did anyway. you talk to John? Wait, I have told you been you... arrested? No, I've never been arrested. I'm just saying if you if I wear this, how you go through it. 
You gotta think about that, these things. That didn't man. sound very convincing at all. You gotta think about <laughs> these things. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about your time in Africa. Okay. How'd you get? You know, you've been to South Africa, New Zealand. That's basically is New Zealand on New the Zealand continent? Is, New Zealand not is not close Africa. to Africa. Yeah. It's close to Australia. Yeah, yeah. it's close. Oh, to yeah, Australia. but like I consider it more Africa than Australia. Why? What? <laughs> do we need to get out of? Do you know what a map? <laughs> What what language do people in New Zealand speak? English. Fuck. So like, okay, well that here's Australia, it. and it's right. over here. It's okay. not by Africa. Okay, fuck it. Um, okay. Are you so, thinking Madagascar? Yeah, I was thinking Madagascar. There oh, okay. it is. That, that's, <laughs> they're the same place, basically. No, Madagascar Pretty. is different from New Zealand. Madagascar. That, the first Madagascar movie was good. Oh yeah. <laughs> After Definitely. that, too much. Okay, two was. The Escape from Africa was pretty good. It was all right, yeah, but that's because they like switched it up, you know. But then all the like stuff that they tried to do, like, like the penguin thing, like, that's just like, yeah. oh, bro, yeah, like, it's not. like I'm sure they made a lot of money though. So were all the Africa trips separate occasions, or did you like go down there and go? to Yeah, different... so, so South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana was one trip, mm-hmm. and then like Nigeria was a separate trip, Egypt was a separate trip. Um, where else have I been? Kenya was a separate trip. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so how many how many times have you been? How many different trips have you taken to the continent of Africa? This decade or in total? Fuck, I guess in total. So, South Africa, and Egypt, Nigeria, Kenya. At, at least six. At least six. Okay. Yeah. Where were you in um, South Africa? So we flew into Johannesburg, mm-hmm. um, and I met my dad there, um, yeah. and then we spent three days there and then went to victoria falls that's why i went to mm-hmm. zimbabwe and zambia uh and then we spent a couple of days in botswana that wasn't planned that's why my mom didn't go okay. and then we went to cape town and that's when my mom met us there okay. because was that the... part was planned yeah uh, that's so, funny i went to johannesburg this summer after mozambique for like a week and I stayed downtown and like a hostel and i like it it's so. it's very interesting like like downtown johannesburg and yeah. then hopping on the subway and going like just up can you, can one, you tell two. us about johannesburg both of you because i don't know shit about johannesburg do you want to start i mean yeah i mean i was just gonna explain like like it's interesting to see like you start in like that like i started in downtown johannesburg and that's where i stayed and then you can hop on the, the subway and go literally up one stop and like the wealth just immediately increases and then you take it one more and you go to like it you go to what is called the richest mall in africa and just like ridiculous wealth yeah no there's gonna be somebody listening to this podcast who lives in that wealthy area <laughs> it, i mean that that's what really surprised me just like going like because downtown you see like tons of homelessness mm-hmm. um like poverty and stuff yeah. and then you take one like literally once stop away is the complete opposite well, i mean that's kind of how it is in some places of london yeah, um, for I sure, mean, I'm sure. Because you go from, like, I was living in Kensington, like Kensington, Kensington, so we're in between Kensington High Street and Gloucester. Yeah. Um, if you know, do you know where that is? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you probably know London better than I do, honestly. I mean, my dad's from there. Yeah. I mean, the jacket. Yeah, no. I've been so, several times. So we went, um, I went from there to Camden, the Camden Town Tube Station, every single day, basically. Mm. And so I'd go on, if I... Went to the bakery, I'd take High Street Kensington, which was always a mistake, and I told myself I'd never do it again. Because mm-hmm. High Street Kensington gets way fewer district lines than Gloucester. I don't know how. But so, right, I get to Gloucester somehow. And then from there, I'd go three stops to Victoria, catch the Victoria northbound to Houston. Mm-hmm. And then from Houston, I'd take the northern northbound to Camden Town, which if you get on the right one, it depends on where it terminates, you know? Mm-hmm. If you get on the right one, it's just a straight shot. And so you mentioned the district line, like you know where the district and city lines meet mm-hmm. in Hammersmith. Yeah, that's where my dad's from. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been to Hammersmith. I'm. You see, the thing is, Victoria. Like I've been to the Victoria's Tube Station so many times, to- like probably hundreds of times. Yeah, I've never gone above ground. Why? Because I was always going to and from work. I mean, there's nothing really out there. There's nothing there. Not really. There's okay. like maybe one busy street. Okay, because I've I've been to like I've been up to Camden, and then my cousin lives over in East London E1, um, in the city. Mm-hmm. So he's next to like Lloyd's and uh, Lockton and stuff like. He works for Lockton, mm-hmm. um, and so 
then I've been over to all the rich areas, really. So Kensington. Yeah, it was like Kensington. Was like um, really yeah, Kensington, Kensington, and then uh, Chelsea. Mayfair is another one. Yeah, Mayfair. Um, we had a lot of meetings in Mayfair. And Mary Lebone, or however you say it. I have no idea. It's, it's like M A R L Y B O N E. <clears throat> but yeah, they're both really rich. And then. Um, fuck. Uh, what's the one? Notting Hill Gate? Notting Hill Gate. Yeah. That's where all the houses look the same there. There's like. I wouldn't say that's like a rich area. It's well, yeah, like but it's like. Upper middle class. Yeah, but like. <laughs> They're upper middle class versus our upper upper middle class. Yeah. Like, okay, that's fair. Um, no, but then like I got off at Action Town once. Like holy shit, that's in London, and like coming from Kensington to Action Town is just like, where am I? <laughs> like you know, I, I, it was like a completely different country, and then because uh, I mean the tube station there is just like shitty. Yeah. And, like compared to you know I mean you got Gloucester it's like covered. You have like a bakery inside. You have a dry cleaners inside the inside the tube station. Like you actually have to go into the tube station. You have to scan your card, your oyster card, to get to the dry cleaners. Yeah. And then you go to Action Town, and it's just like a traditional like nineteen seven or like seventeen nineties railroad. <laughs> and and so that was weird. Um, but no. And then over in the city, I get off at Altgate or Altgate East, mm -hmm. and. Like there's some pretty sketchy spots over there, but it's more like urban sketchy. Yeah. Um. And so I don't know. London's a pretty tricky play. Like as far as like the wealth gap in London, I've never seen something like that before. Oh yeah, it's definitely like there's a tube station. It's on the district line. It's called Bayswater. Um, I don't know if you you've been, but like I feel like I took the wrong route. Is it on the east? It's it's like where so like if you were taking the district and city line like going towards Hammersmith. Mm -hmm. it would be like the closest one to Hammersmith okay yeah I haven't been there it's like it I mean, looks like, like I've gone, so I've like I've gone through it but like the place is like disgusting like people like literally like throw trash like onto the tracks like yeah. it's it's like a really like terrible area yeah okay I feel like if you did that in like uh, like Lost or High Street you get arrested but it's like so close to Hammersmith which is like kind of a nice area mm -hmm. and so like it's it's weird that like one station you have like people literally throwing trash onto the track and then you have like a station yeah that well has, i mean like, that that's like how shepherd's verse shepherd's bush versus kensington is is it's just like one or two stops depending on which line you're taking yeah but the property values literally go from uh like 2500 pounds per square foot yeah which converting that for people who don't know that's like five grand no it's like four grand yeah. Like four grand per square foot. I don't know if anybody listening to this podcast like can comprehend that. Um, how many square feet is your apartment? I'm not sure. It's small. Yeah, but like let's say it's like 800 square feet, right? Yeah. Um, you got a couple of people living there. 800 times 4,000. You're an engineer. <laughs> it's like 3 million. <laughs> Yeah, so that your apartment, your small average like college apartment would cost three million US dollars. Damn. Like that's if you got the going rate, which nobody gets the going rate because nothing's for sale. Yeah. Um, and so that that's that was just crazy that I couldn't even comprehend, you know. Um, and then I mean you go over to Shepherd's Bush, and I mean it drops to eight hundred pounds per square foot. Let's talk about why you didn't go to the Shard. Why I didn't go to? I didn't. I just never had the opportunity to go to the shard. Like it didn't present itself. Four months. Then, I was like, you, know? you had like four I months, and I it's literally gone, yeah. like the coolest building in there. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, in the world. Yeah. No, I saw it a lot. I was around it. But you didn't go in it. No. You missed like. I went into Lloyd's. No, you missed like an opportunity. Yeah, but like, think about all the people who've been in the sh into the shard. I've been into Lloyd's. You're never gonna get that view anywhere else in the city. Well, I could go back to London. I mean, yeah, you could. But, like, yeah, <laughs> so I'll, I'll do it eventually. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Shard is, like, this crazy expensive... It's tallest building in Western Europe. Yeah, tallest building in Western Europe. Um, there's, for example, the the Chinese company that bought JD Power, um, their XON something. Nobody knew who their uh, money... Nobody knew where their money was coming from until... 
some Chinese billionaire's daughter was talking to an investment banker and she's like, how was my, how was helping my dad buy JD power? And he went, what the fuck? Um, but like, that's how much money these people have. Right. And so they don't even know where the money comes from because there's just so much of it. And they have an office building in the shard. So that's like how nice the shard is. There's a hotel in it. Yeah. There's a hotel in the shard where on the mirror, there are TVs and clocks and the curtains are actually blackout curtains and they're on clap command and, and there's actually uh, there's people who live there too. Yeah, I heard it's a really really cool hotel, but it's yeah. like really expensive to stay there. Yeah, so. no, it's obnoxious. It's basically people. It's basically executives for very powerful companies, and the company pays for it. I don't think anybody pays their personal. Yeah, because I mean it's it's crazy. I've wanted to stay there, but then I was like, Zan, can you search how much it is to stay at the Shard? Yeah, I'm gonna start. I think the hotel in there is like I think it's called the Shangri La Hotel. It is. Okay. It's, it's like really expensive. Shangri-La. But at the top, which you wouldn't know because you didn't go, they have three sky decks, level 68, 69, and 72. And don't you dare laugh at that. <laughs> no, it's, it's just like, why are they all so close to each other? Well, because like, so level 68 is like, you would pay to go to like level 68 because it's like just like a basic like view. Mm. And it's like- Are the other ones private? It's not private, it's just you get a better view. So like okay. when you go to the top, like on level 72, the building is open. And so like, I don't know, I think it's better for pictures just because like, you know, it's open, like so you don't really have to worry about the window. Yeah, have you been to um, Sushi Samba? No. Okay, well there, fuck you. <laughs> no, she's- 400 a night. 400 pounds or US? US. Yes. Okay. That's not. That's not bad. That's not. But I, mean, I feel that's, like that's, that's for. That's, to, that's if you wanted to go. But that's for like three the, weeks out. The most basic room. Yeah, and you have to book three weeks out. Yeah. For the most basic room, you have to book three weeks. Wonder out. what like one of their suites is. See if you can find out how much one of the suites is. Because I know they have a suite in there that like, I don't know. You just like press a button and like the doors just like open. Like you don't like have a key. Damn. Like it, it just like opens. Like when you, it they just give knows you, who you are. No, they give you, they don't give you a key. They like give you a button and you just like damn hit that and it just like opens. Like that's what I, I was told. I that is called was. a power move. <laughs> um, no, damn. Damn, that's fucking crazy. I want to, um, I want to be rich enough to try that one day. I mean, I'm sure you could like pool your funds now and get it for like one night. I'm, I'm sure I could. You use one of my scholarships. Yeah, just use the scholarship, <laughs> man. Fuck it. Westminster Suite is two thousand pounds per night. Two thousand pounds. Two thousand nine hundred U.S. dollars. Okay. Per that's night. Not that's not terrible. Yeah. There's this one, and uh, of course, that's for like probably a couple people. It's probably yeah. not a big suite. Yeah. Because I was gonna say there's this suite in um, New York City that goes for like fifty thousand a night, but it like you use it for fundraisers so you can fit a couple hundred people in there oh, okay um versus that suite you can probably fit four people in yeah probably. um and i'm sure you have to book it multiple months in advance probably and just so people know there's no like attraction there's no like it's not disney world it's just like it's actually that nice yeah i'd say nice. i'd say you're probably at that place you're probably actually getting 2900 dollars in value probably probably um, i mean the view you're gonna get from the top of that thing crazy is, yeah yeah, that would change your life. No, but, um, okay. Yeah, let's start wrapping Next. up here because I gotta, gotta head out. I had dinner, I told Buzz you. Buzzkill. He did dinner. tell you, like, while you were trying to set up all yeah. of this, that he had dinner at six. So yeah. I put in effort and work, Boy, I mean, and I come home <laughs> to the house, and everybody shits on me, and nobody made dinner. Oh my gosh. Um, no, all right. All right, so let's one, talk about one some other shit. One key takeaway, I think, that the listeners should take from Eric here is, so what value do you think there is in, like, traveling? Like, if you could sum it up, like, why you think people should travel? I think there's a ton of value. I, I mean, it's, like, I feel like when you're traveling, you're paying for, like, more than just, like, you know, activities. You're, like, paying for, like, the experience. And, mm -hmm. like, it's there's a learning lesson that comes with it. And I've noticed that my family the more trips we go on the closer we get mm -hmm. and so it's it's a lot of fun i mean there's there's a lot of stuff that you can learn from traveling and i mean there's stuff that you need to see outside of what you're used to oh definitely yeah like there's it's it's an amazing world out there and i think that everyone has like some interest in like a different culture and they should go out and mm -hmm. see it isn't it crazy that there's been like i haven't even been to all this i've never been to new york city have you not no 
I've never been to I've flown through San Francisco I've been to Pleasanton which is like an hour outside I've never been to San Francisco I've never been to Pleasanton I've never been to New York never been to LA never been to Toronto wow and it's just like you know these cities are fucking crazy and so yeah no I'm going to New I mean, York for spring break I'll go there for half a week you gotta think though there's like like 50% of the population in Arkansas that hasn't left Arkansas yeah so. yeah. yeah yeah no that's just mind blowing to think about so okay not that it's gonna turn you into a crazy libtard but people you should travel sure. because honest on honestly I would say that traveling you know people I don't know there's would you say there's a stigma that people who travel a lot are more liberal I, I guess kind of because like slightly. they're more slightly they're slightly yeah. but like I feel like it hasn't affected my political views at all like even living in London which is pretty liberal it's a pretty liberal city yeah compared to America yeah I mean true. compared to Europe it's pretty conservative yeah. um but I mean I, mean, I don't yeah I don't that, think your political views I mean if you have set political views like traveling probably won't affect yeah. them but I think it'll make you a more open-minded person yeah, yeah. that's that's what I would say the correlation yeah, is between that's like, what I was people trying who to travel get at. more are definitely I would say like more open-minded yeah I'd say it doesn't really affect your views but it makes you think about them in other ways and see other perspectives oh, yeah, and really that good. it may even strengthen your views because you understand why you think what you do and you know you're thinking more about what you're doing yeah uh, I'd say that that for me traveling made me think more about my purpose mm-hmm. um, and that because when you when like when I went to Vietnam you just see stuff that you've never seen before when I went to oh, London yeah you just see stuff that you've never seen before yeah. and not saying like it's good or bad or crazy it may just be the most normal thing ever yeah. but you've never seen it before yeah, exactly. and so you're like wow that's crazy it's and, cool to like reflect on that yeah. and compare it to like especially for people who are just like from Arkansas or mm-hmm. just from one place like you see something new and you compare it to like how different this is like when I was saying like my transition from Japan to Arkansas I had never seen so many McDonald's before in my mm-hmm. life and like I just thought that that was really cool because like if you wanted to go to McDonald's in Japan uh, it's quite the journey yeah. but here in Arkansas it's really not yeah I thought that was really interesting yeah no it's, it's um when you go to like a highly populated area where'd you live in Japan suburb of Tokyo suburb of Tokyo okay so that's really highly populated you're anywhere you go more than like a tenth of a mile is going to be a journey. Yeah. Um, that was something I noticed here versus like, if I see IHOP 10 miles away, I'd be like, oh, okay. Versus if we're in London and I see, well, they don't have IHOP, but let's say they have IHOP. Yeah. And I see IHOP's 10 miles away, I'm going to be like, no. Yeah. No. I don't, I don't feel like spending half of my day going to IHOP. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is just, I mean, it's just crazy because, you know, I'd say the tube, you probably traveled like you you can change your world by going from one tube station to the next oh yeah and that people won't even know i mean just it's just, nothing's the same really yeah um because it's basically a new city yeah um and sure. so i don't know i'll see you people from from la who are trying to regulate our lives did you know i saw um interesting i'm gonna figure out the actual statistic Zan, i'm wrapping up chill out I'm wrapping up the actual statistic, but um, I'll find it. But it's something like 60% of reporters live in L.A. or New York City. That makes sense. But, like, how much do you think that affects the news? Because, I mean, living in New y- in London, I don't know, I saw a lot more about the world, right? Yeah. But I didn't see anything specific. And I can tell you that if I lived in London my entire life, there's a lot that goes on in Arkansas that I just couldn't relate to. Yeah. Advert- and I mean vice versa. Yeah. And so, I don't know. Reporters, quit being alcoholics and spread yourself. Um, <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> and on that note. Yeah, I think that's it. Eric, you got any wrapping up comments? I don't know. All right, cool. This is perfect. That works. Perfect. <laughs> All right, um, this was Life for Podcast, episode four, Eric Williams. Definitely going to have to have him back. If you guys have any of the any questions about the countries, here, I'll list them off real quick. Germany, France, um, whatever that thing is. England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Switzerland, Spain, Italy, United States, Canada, Mexico, South Korea, China, Japan, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Botswana, sorry. 
the UAE, Peru, Brazil, Ecuador, Denmark, um, Mar- Madagascar. Madagascar. Well, my my handwriting is so bad that I can't or read. Or Z. <laughs> or my, Z. Yeah. If you just have a question about traveling, I love. Yeah. To talk if you have any questions just, about traveling, <laughs> um, find Eric. Leave them in the comments. I'll forward them on. I don't know if anybody comments on our videos. I haven't seen any yet, but whatever. Fuck it. We're still sick. And, <laughs> um, all right. Okay. So that was Life for Podcast Episode Four. Eric Williams. Thanks for tuning in and ask questions. We still haven't figured out an exit for this. Actually, <laughs> let me plug something here. We no. have a code for two free audiobooks for any of you people um, through Audible. And uh, I'm pretty sure they give us money, which is kind of sick. So um, just throw like 20 different emails into it and use our link. It'll be in the description below. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Life of Podcast. Check out the links below for more information. Whoa.